Hi, I'm Uli, and today I'm going to tell you how I study using Notion. Um, so if you don't know me, um, my name is Uli. I am a year 12 student studying in the UK, hoping to apply to medicine. So in the very first video, I mentioned that I think that taking notes has a very small productivity density, which I still think, but I didn't explain how I do notes because I, I still do them because I think it's not really wise, in my opinion, to rely just on the PowerPoints that my teachers supply. And there's quite a lot of extra information that teachers give out that I don't particularly need. So I do still make notes. And I'm Gonna tell you how. Also, I will, as always, leave timestamps below if you want to skip over certain parts. So, if you don't know, Notion is an amazing app that is completely free for personal use, and it is an app that I use to organize anything and everything in my life. <laughs> And the reason why I use Notion is because it has this amazing toggle feature where I can hide things under questions and I'm gonna get on to why that's useful a little bit later. It has a very minimalistic design with just the features that you need with nothing extra and you know useless so that it doesn't take too long to get to know the app. It syncs between all of your devices so for example I use it mostly on my iPad, a little bit on my phone and a little bit on my laptop and it syncs between all of the devices and it works offline so if you know if I make some kind of notes on my iPad and then I'm on the bus even though it's locked down, but like if I was to be on the bus and I would just randomly wanted to revise for a topic test that's coming up, I could just open it up and, you know, revise it. If it has synced while there's Wi-Fi, then I could just revise it offline and it's like totally fine. And finally, it's the ability to highlight because, you know, highlighting is quite important. I'm going to get onto why a little bit later as well. You can import pictures and you can hide the pictures under these toggles that I talked about just now. And you can use tables. And before I get onto how I actually make notes with Notion, I want to talk about two things called active recall and space repetition and these are the two things that i use when i study with notion so active recall if you haven't heard is basically recalling information and learning it actively and learning practicing to retrieve it from your brain rather than just passively reading over notes and in my opinion is more well it's not my opinion it's scientifically proven that it's more effective than passive learning and if you think about it in an exam you actually have to recall the information so if you don't practice recalling the information it can be quite hard to use it if you haven't practiced so for example I like tennis. <laughs> random fact. If you bought a tennis racket and you decided that you want to start playing tennis and then you watched a YouTube video about how to play tennis, that's passive learning. You didn't do anything, you literally just watched the information and you absorbed it. But then you can go watch a hundred videos on YouTube, all of the master classes, all of the interviews with Serena Williams, but you're still not going to be that good at tennis. And that's because you have to use the information that you received from YouTube and I don't know, a coach or someone who you listen to. And you actually have to practice using that information. So you learn that you have to hold your racket like that but you have to practice holding your racket like that and it's exactly the same study. You can learn all of the information, but you really have to learn how to use it. And space repetition is basically interrupting something called the forgetting curve. And the forgetting curve explains how we forget things over a period of time. Basically, you want to keep interrupting it. So you want to keep looking over the material every once in a while. And then at the end, it would stay in your long-term memory and you will never forget it. So what I do is I just review them during the holidays and it works for me most of the time. So how I take my notes using Notion. Oh, Overall, I use the toggle feature to write questions for every single aspect of a topic. And then under the toggle, I write all of the information that answering the questions, any graphs that I need to put in, explaining the part of that topic. I do that for active recall so that I can practice it instead of just reading over text. I can ask myself these questions, then I can recall information, then I can check whether I recall the correct information. I also have a system of highlighting, which I use, which I'm going to show you. Basically, the things that are highlighted in green are the parts that I've written my questions questions for and answers for. The things highlighted in orange means that I've written the questions for them but I haven't written the answers yet. If it's highlighted in red, I haven't written the questions or the answers but I've learned the information. And if it's not highlighted, that means I just haven't learned the information yet. So some tips as always, it's kind of hard to organize the information so I'm just gonna put them in the tips format. <laughs> so first of all, and the one that I feel really strongly about and think that everyone should use is use your specification for a subject, particularly if you're doing something like sciences or psychology or history or geography in fact the spec is so important you can get it for free on the website of the exam board that you're doing and organize your notes based on a specification not based on a textbook or the way your teachers give it to you base it on a specification because different textbooks organize information in different ways and the only 100% reliable method is the specification because the exam board does not have the right to ask you about something that's not on the spec if it's not in the spec it is never going to be asked in any of the questions so it's really important to make sure that your spec is exam board specific so that you know exactly what you need Need and don't need to know and actually a good example of that is like the other day we were learning about mass and physics 
I have a great physics teacher, but he's really passionate about the things that he's doing. And he was talking about why we can travel at the speed of light and why light can travel at the speed of light and what property would a material have to have in order to be able to travel at the speed of light. And I don't need to know any of that. All I need to know is what the difference between mass and weight and how is ma mass related to force. That's all I need to know. So I'm not gonna try and understand all of the information and I'm not gonna try wasting time understanding it and writing notes for it because I don't need to know it. And if I'm interested, then of course I'll like research and stuff, but then I'm not really that into physics. So. The next tip is don't use too many toggles. That was my mistake in the beginning because I was really passionate about toggles. And then I thought, wow, this is such a great feature. And I started using it like all over the place and places where it should be used. So like I would have toggles within a question and then toggles within each toggle and then like toggles within that toggle. It's just such a mess. But just don't make too, too many toggles because you're gonna have to keep opening it over and over again and it does get really annoying. Then try to use colors and highlight and why that's so important is because even though you aren't reading over your notes, um, you're looking over them once you like answered your question and you open the toggle and you see what you wrote. The things that are highlighted, they pop out more. So for me, if it's something that is really specific for mark schemes, then I, I definitely highlight it. Because for example, A-level biology is the hardest subject for me so far because the mark schemes are so specific, you know? Like you can't say a cross concentration grading, you have to say down. <laughs> like it's things like that, that every single word matters. I will highlight the word down, the concentration gradient because down is so important. And, and unless you say down, you're just not gonna get the mark. So I'm gonna highlight down so that when I review the information i'm gonna know that it's it's down definitely i also use this call out feature which really helps things stand stand out but it, it does look quite bulky sometimes so i mostly use it for webinars books podcasts and I use it to summarize the whole thing that I just listened to or read in one sentence. So like, what is the one main point of this book or this webinar or this video, or this podcast? And then later it helps me come back to the information and think, oh, is this, like, is this helpful? The next tip is really learn the shortcuts for your software that you're using. So for example, if you use the arrow thing that it automatically makes it a toggle, and that's really how you minimize the amount of time that you're spent studying, because in instead of having to go like, you can, this, 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 this. you can just quickly use the keyboard shortcut. The next tip is try typing up the notes as soon as you can, because for me, if I don't do the notes straight after the lesson or like the day after the lesson, I'm just never gonna do it. And the thing is, it like keeps piling up all of the things that you have to do your notes for. And then it comes to mocks or even like real exams and you're just like, I don't have the notes for this section of physics. And I really wish I did because then I don't really have time to make the notes when it's like a couple of weeks before the exam because you really just want to be focusing on practice questions once it gets close to exams. And it also helps you review the information that you just learned so that you are less likely to forget it, interrupting the forgetting curve because the first curve goes really, really fast. And if, even if you interrupt it a couple of days after you just learned it, then you're already less likely to forget it. The next thing is keep adding to your notes. Once you've finished your notes, that doesn't mean that the, the learning stops here. Every single time you do a topic test or prep or you hear it somewhere else, you add to your notes so that you know your notes are always up to speed and have all of the information that you think you need. If you study at night, you can put on dark mode, which is something I haven't seen a lot of people do, which I'm quite surprised about because I really like the dark mode. When I'm sitting in my room and it's dark, the bright white screen of Notion, because you can't really change your background, so the bright white screen of Notion does get on my nerves and it, it can be quite hard to focus. And all of the highlights still work in dark mode, which is great from there because, you know, in OneNote, if you use dark mode, then the highlighting doesn't work, which is so stupid, but here it does. So at night, I always use dark mode. And the last tip for me is make sure that when you're using Notion, it's not the only resource that you're using. And I think that's applicable to any resource that you're using with studying. Like if you're only using practice questions, then you will find it quite hard learning all of the information because practice questions tend to focus on certain things and ignore others. So it's really important important to have other sources of study. For me, it's Notion, practice questions. I re I watch YouTube videos because when I'm when I can't be bothered to study like watching recap youtube videos helps a lot and it's teaching other people like i actually love when my friends ask me oh can you please explain this to me because it helps me retrieve the information and explain it in a simple way but i'm still a believer that you know exam technique is the best way that you can study but i i'm not saying that it should be the only way for you to study you should prioritize exam technique but if you haven't learned the information and understood the information yet then it's kind of pointless trying to do the exam questions because you're just going to get all of them wrong um so that's the end of the video i hope you found it useful you used to have to pay quite a lot of money for it but then 
as of like 2019 it became free for like personal use but okay a short disclaimer again it does take quite a while to get used to it and it does take quite a while to transfer all of the information to it because for me it took me like two months to get to know the perks and how everything works and like actually get used to the app but now that i am used to it i literally do everything on here i don't even use word anymore so you should really try it out and let me know if you want to see a tour of everything else on notion because studying is just a really 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 small aspect of it um you can follow me on instagram even though i don't post anything on there and i will see you in the next video thanks bye bye